Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with pippinsplugins.com and what I'm going to show you in this quick tutorial is how to work with the Transients API in WordPress. Uh, essentially the Transients API is a method of storing cached data in WordPress um, and right now you can see that I'm on the Codex page for the Transients API and it's a pretty simple um, set of functions to work with. Essentially we have a function that's going to store data, store it in a cache with a set expiration and then we have a function to also retrieve that cache data and then delete it if we want. So what I'm going to show you is just a really simple example of how to set a transient. Um, so we're going to basically take a set of data, we're going to store it in a transient or in a cache, and then we're going to retrieve that data from the cache itself. Uh, so the examples I'm going to show you are really, really simple, but they can be very easily expanded to much more realistic and useful purposes. Uh, so I'm going to go over here, and this is my custom functions plugin. This is just a function, a plugin that I leave running at all times that just allows me to tinker with code. Uh, so we're just going to write one function here, um, and let's just call it Pippin Transient Demo, just like this. Okay, and in order to demo this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach this function uh, to the admin notices hook having serious trouble typing this morning. Um, so just like this. The reason I'm going to do this is it gives me a really easy way to um, output or echo information. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to just do this echo test. And now what's going to happen in my local WordPress is I'm going to see this up here, test. So I'm going to use this to allow me a method to display the cast, cached information for you so that you can very easily see it. Um, so let's get rid of this and we're going to use two functions to start with one is get transient and the other is set transient so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our data vap parameter data equals get transient then the name of the transient that we want to get uh, this name can be anything it's determined when you set the transient itself so I'm just going to do sample trans for now just to make it simple so basically this is going to go and retrieve the value stored in the sample trans transient um, if it's there now what we do is we basically go do a check to make sure whether or not the transient was actually available so we so so if false then a triple equal sign data so basically if this transient was not received or not retrieved sorry we're gonna do this uh, do this if no transient set okay so what this does now is first it goes and retrieves the transient if the transient is available great if it's not available it's gonna go into here and at the very end we're gonna echo out the transient the value of it so now let's just say data equals this is the data stored in the transient just like that and now what we do is set transient the name of our transient just like that make sure they match the second parameter is the value we want to store and then the third parameter which is optional is the length of time in seconds that we want this value to be stored so let's set it to 10 for now okay so now let me walk you back through what's going to happen real quick first of all we're going to set up a variable called data and we're going to retrieve the value of the transient called sample trans if it is available or if there is data stored we're going to bypass all of this so you can imagine that's just gone and it's going to echo out the value of whatever is stored in this transient if however the transient is empty or it's not set which is right here then we go and set the data value variable to this value and then we store it in a transient right here so let's see what happens okay so we see that this is the data oops excuse that selection this is the data stored in the transient has been echoed out through here because we have it set up with admin notices and now basically every time that I refresh what this is going to do is instead of setting the data 
it's actually going to retrieve the value stored from the transient itself. So why is this useful? Well, this is actually extremely useful because it's the same way that caching, uh, I mean, essentially this, this is the cache, uh, is the same way caching has a huge improvement on performance. So let's imagine for a second that we're doing an expensive database query where we are going and querying the database for a whole bunch of different posts um, and it takes up a lot of resources. Well, if we store that query in a transient and this qu query only has to be refreshed every couple hours or so, then every single time the page is loaded, instead of doing that query, which is expensive, we're simply going to retrieve it from the cached value using the get transient. Um, so you can see immediately that this could have a huge performance impact. Um, obviously, using it just to store little text strings like this is going to have zero impact, if not a negative performance, because then we have to actually go and get the transient value variable, we have to set it, etc. So assuming that you're doing this for what it's actually used for, it's extremely valuable. So now let me kind of demo to you what how this works a little bit more. So right now, we see this is the data stored in the transient. So I'm going to change this. This is the data stored in the cache. Now let's go over here and refresh. No, it still says this is the data stored in the transient. That's because it retrieved the cache value. So let's refresh again. Now it's changed. I set it to refresh every 10 seconds. Well, that's what it's done. It simply refreshed it and st said that, oh, this is what I need to get in the cache now. Um, so this we've refreshed the value. So you can think of this as, well, the database was updated, so we've requeried it after our expiration date to make sure that our cache is up to date, and now we're going to display the up-to-date data. Um, so if we change this again, this is the new cache. Let's go see what we see. Well, we see it, and that's because we refreshed right on top of the expiration date. So this is the new cache is. And no, we don't see it yet. Let's refresh again. Still don't see it. Refresh again. And now we see it, because now we've hit that 10-second expiration. So you could theoretically, or not even really theoretically, in a very likely situation, let's say that you're querying the database for a whole bunch of different posts. Uh, maybe this is a related post plugin. Uh, what you would do is you would query the post, you would query the database, you would store that query in the transient, and then you would only ever perform that query if you saw that the transient that it, you set it as was either expired or non-existent. So if false, the data, that means that the query needs to happen again because the transient has expired, go and do this. Otherwise, just simply use the query as is, as stored in the cache, therefore saving a lot of your performance. Uh, increasing your performance dramatically. So especially on a large site that has lots and lots of queries, if you were to implement this across the site in a whole bunch of different areas, you could dramatically increase your performance. Um, so I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is kind of a really simple introduction to the Transients API, uh, but it doesn't really get a lot more complex than this. Um, I mean, the Transients API is really simple. The thing is, is it sounds complex. It's really not. It is as simple as this. So I would encourage you to take this little sample that I've shown you here uh, and play with it. Uh, work with setting up your data variable to actually contain a lot of uh, all of the query from your database. So maybe a git post query uh, or a git comments query or something like that. Um, and test with, test it, play with it, have fun. Um, and I really encourage you to use it in your plugins. Uh, it has a significant performance improvement when used correctly, especially on expensive queries. So anyway, that's a simple introduction to the Transients API in WordPress.